in 2021 in Presque Hill County, Sheboygan County, any surrounding county, wherever you work, wherever you go, what we need is conviction in your message. And Jesus still saves in 2021. Proverbs 22 and verse number 6 says this, Train up a child in the way that he should go. And that he there is not gender specific, but is talking about in a general sense, raising your children in the way that your children should be raised and directed, in the way of the Lord, of course. If you read through the Proverbs, you'll understand we're talking about the way of the Lord. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, the child that is, he should not depart from it. That's in Proverbs 22 and verse number 6. There's a difference, big difference, between teaching a child and training a child. Many of us not only teach our children and then find that in some measure they continue to go their own way, but in the dictionary, the definition to train is this, to prepare for a contest, much like a coach, to form to a proper shape, to discipline for use. And that word discipline is talking about the disciplines, uh, the character, the molding and the shaping of the character and the will for a specific task. The scripture tells us plain and simple that we are to train our children to be champions for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that one of the greatest roles that we can have with our children, especially as they get older and then as they move through adulthood themselves, is to be a great encourager and a great coach, a champion for them. If you're going to raise young children to be champions, there are several elements that it's going to take to make that happen. And I'd like to talk about that this morning very specifically, and I'm going to ask if Brother Schultz would lead us to prayer, and then we're going to look at three different things that I think, uh, as a dad, it doesn't matter what age you are, as a dad, uh, maybe even as a grandfather, some different things that you can do, uh, some different thoughts on how you can raise uh, children that count. Uh, Brother Schultz, would you take us to prayer? Father, we just thank you for your love. We thank you for the many blessings. We thank you for each one here this morning. Thank you for each of us. We pray you the best. The heart of you, the message that you have, which is not only just here, but only you do it. Thank you for the way that you bless the pastor. In Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it, meaning the way. Three thoughts. The first is this. It commences with childhood. It commences with childhood. I think oftentimes one of the failures of raising children that count is waiting too late. One of the errors of raising children that count is waiting too late. Time goes by almost at warp speed, doesn't it? It goes by so fast. And it's an unbelievable thing. Uh, the other day I was thinking that uh, when we had built our house, and at the time, I didn't see the importance. I thought, you know, I really ought to plant some fruit trees. I did not do that. And now I'm thinking, if I had planted those fruit trees right in the beginning, now we'd be 15 years on, and I'm sure the apple trees would be yielding at this point. But it's just not keeping track of time and realizing that time goes by incredibly fast. So it commences with childhood. Start early. You can never begin too early in raising children that count. I believe at a young age, praying over your children. And everybody does something different. And I'm not trying to be spooky or odd or weird, but 
uh, man uh, laying your hand uh, on your, uh, your child, even uh, just in the womb, and, and getting it as close as you can, praying over them, yielding them to the Lord, asking the Lord very specifically, yielding yourself to the Lord, saying, Lord, uh, this child is a gift from you, and I want to, the best way that I can, to raise this child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So it commences with childhood. To dedicate your children to the Lord while they're still really even in the womb. And uh, I love, it's kind of a, a trend, and I wasn't sure how I felt about it in the beginning, but I love it now the more that I think about it. But I love how oftentimes now when there's a birth announcement and they know already uh, what the what the child, uh, what the gender is, whether boy or girl, that they have already named the child. I love that. I really do. Uh, realizing this child is a gift from God, and uh, God bless you, and not knowing uh, what the Lord has, but dedicating them to the Lord while they're still in the womb. Teaching them scripture before they can even walk. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful and a beautiful thing. It's not because it's cliche, to hear them say the name Jesus. It's such an incredible thing that you start early. You start early. That you begin to instill these values at a very early age. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. And as we read the book of Proverbs, we understand that this man is giving instruction to his son. And over and over again, he uses this phrase, my son, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. And he talks about uh, my son, you know, hear the instruction of your mom and don't forsake the law of your dad. And over and over again, what is he doing? He's simply instructing his child in the way. And Proverbs are incredible instruction, but if you call out all the instructions that are given from a parent to a child, it's really getting us to understand that it's never too early to start instructing children in the way. Even in the womb or as a young child playing hymns and scripture songs to instill this. It commences with childhood. Number two, when we are trying to raise children that count, we learn to communicate with creativity. Communicate with creativity. I think this is a big deal. Satan wants your children, and he's very creative. Uh, he'll use music, he'll use entertainment, uh, he'll use uh, many different things. Uh, oftentimes, uh, cartoons and movies have a very direct message that they are teaching your child. They are communicating something too. They are passing their values to your child through many different creative mediums. As your children get older, there's other messages that are being communicate, uh, communicated. Uh, through violent video games, your child is being communicated uh, to, to deal with, uh, with their rage and their anger. They're being uh, taught uh, that, that a virtual world is more important than an actual world. And there's so many things that are being communicated uh, to a child in very subtle ways. So we as believers who want to raise a child that counts, we want to raise champions for the Lord Jesus Christ, then we also have to be very creative about how we communicate. You are never going to force feed a child God's word. The word of God is an incredible tool that can shape, mold, and raise children uh, that have uh, decency and morals. It can raise children with the backbone of a saw log. The Bible is a wonderful tool, but it's a terrible club to use to beat people over the head with. Yeah. It just doesn't work. You will raise children, if you use scripture to prove your point, if you use scripture to badger and beat your children, all you will do is you'll create children that resent you and resent the Word of God and the people of God. Communicate with creativity. 
When you're out for a drive and they see something beautiful, you'll say, man, that is beautiful. Isn't it amazing how God created that for our enjoyment? And these are the ways that we speak to our children. I remember one time we're standing in our, in our uh, or my wife was standing in the living room with, with Drew. And I think Drew was probably about uh, maybe four years old. A butterfly had landed on the door wall. And he pointed at it. He said, Mom, a butterfly. And she ran over. Oh, it's so beautiful. And she's making over it. And Drew looked right at it. He said, I shoot it. <laughs> okay, so you're going to have moments, right? You're going to have moments. Communicate with creativity. One time I was shaving in the bathroom, getting ready for Sunday church, and I had a tie-on that some of the ladies at church had given me. It had, it had uh, billiards on it. And uh, they, were, they were ribbing me for playing uh, billiards in the basement at church. So my son looked at it. He said, Dad, he says, what's that on your tie? I said, these are billiards. And I was so proud of myself. I'm teaching him a big word, right? Had him repeat it several times, and I just kept shaving. He said, Dad... Billiards look a lot like pool balls. <laughs> yeah. This squashed my teachable moment. Jesus Christ created a hunger creatively teaching the Word of God using parables. He paralleled things. And he taught them about birds and grass and the skies and all these things that Jesus spoke about to teach profound truth of the Word of God simply stated. Raising children to know the Scripture doesn't have to be dull. It can be really exciting. Uh, and it seems like at our house everything was a science fair project. It's like, that would make a good science fair project. And I get ribbed a little for that. And maybe one day they'll put a video together and make fun of me of all that. But... There can be Christian books, wholesome games, music, different things that you can do in your home, surrounding your children with lessons that are exciting to learn. All of that's going to hinge on how you parent and how you, as a dad, show the way. Raising children that count, raising champions for Christ, commences with childhood. And you communicate with creativity. Number three, you correct with consistency. You correct with consistency. Remember the word training here. Train up a child in the way he should go is in the same sense that a coach trains athletes. There are poor coaches. There are some coaches uh, that have no patience and they push the athlete too hard, too fast. I always think it's sad when I see college athletes uh, that have some kind of a, some kind of a equipment on every single joint that they have because in high school they suffered so many injuries because they had a coach that really didn't know how to be patient and push the athlete too fast, too hard. It takes patience. A wise guide corrects with consistency. Sometimes dad, they get in a fit and uh, they just pour it on one day. Then the next day they feel guilty and they let everything go. There has to be a balance with that. Every child needs godly and reasonable limits. The Bible says that a child that is left to himself uh, bringeth his mother to shame. And it's always sad when I hear somebody uh, who has a child that's 15 or 16 say, well, I took them to church. They know what's right or wrong, and they can figure it out. They're smart. 
Oh no, listen, that's the time when they need you the most. And when you feel sometimes that your kids are put, uh, drawing away a little bit, and every child does, that's the time when you need to draw them a little closer and build a relationship that is going to hold them rather than just simply talking at them. Limits will always be tested. If you're a parent of a young child, write that big and bold in your Bible. Limits will always be tested. Your children are going to want to know if your biblical boundaries are real. And they're going to push against the fence uh, to see if uh, that boundary is real or if it's kind of a suggestion. God has gifted your children with a, with a God knowledge, but your children also have a predisposition to sin. Can you imagine that? Your children are just as rebellious as you were. And you can take that all the way back to Adam if you'd like. But children push against the fence. If the biblical boundaries that you have set up move, the child will have no security. If you have church rules, but then you have different home rules, the difference isn't that your child is going to hate you for having hypocrisy in your church rules and home rules. The child's not going to hate the church for having church rules and separate home rules. It is a proven psychological fact. I could uh, cite the study that was done. The, children, the child learns to hate himself. When we have a double standard as a dad that we live differently than what we say amen to at church. And that's a problem. If the limitations, these Bible boundaries that you set up move, the child will have no security. There must be consistency in our living. If you withhold correction from your child, you are making your child a candidate for eternal punishment. If you withhold correction from your child, you are making your child a candidate for eternal punishment. Many years ago, a friend of mine that I went to college with began a trip to go as a candidate, as a missionary, to go to Cambodia. And his name was Brother Walter, and he's still a missionary in Cambodia. Brother Walter gave his testimony at our church, and we listened to his testimony. Something very fascinating that he said. He said he grew up in a home where they were pretty much godless. Uh, there was no church attendance. There was no knowledge of God. There was no scripture. Uh, they had some morality as individuals, but there was really no God consciousness that was spoken of in their home. But he said this. He said, my mom and dad lived and they passed away and never knew the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. He said, but I want to thank them for helping bring me to salvation. I thought that's a curious statement that he made. He said, they stressed obedience at home. And when I heard the gospel, I responded to the gospel message with obedience because of the training that my parents gave me, not even knowing what they were doing. One last thing I'd like to mention. I said three, this is four. Raising children that count Raising champions for Christ consummates with conversion. The number one goal for any parent ought to be the salvation of their child. It's an incredible thing. It's an incredible thing. The Bible says that the earth uh, will pass away, uh, this world shall pass away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And when you lead your child to salvation by your consistent testimony when they get saved, the ultimate goal is to help your child have something that will last 
a lifetime and beyond. I believe it's important that we guide children to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. I don't think we should force them. We can't force salvation on them, but it's an incredible thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing. When your children come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Just a few thoughts for you as a dad, a challenge. Many of you uh, here today, you're an incredible example of what a godly and a good father is. Encouragement from me, keep it up. Keep it going. Allow God to use you to be a godly example. Continue to be that godly example. Don't rear by fear. And God fills in the gaps. Uh, when your love towards your child is right and your heart toward the Lord is right as well.